is Dave Meltzer with Entrepreneurs the Playbook, and I have an extraordinary entrepreneur, Executive Chief Operating Officer of the incredible company Reddit, Jen Wong. Welcome to the Playbook. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Oh, I'm so excited. Just huge fan of companies, but also of executives. And I will tell you, one of the things that I love as looking at your career, um, there's kind of been pushback on the academic side of being an executive. You know, I have my friends out there, the Gary V's of the world that, you know, talk about college graduate schools. And I grew up in the doctor, lawyer or failure family. Um, and my siblings all went to the Ivy Leagues, Harvard, Penn, Columbia. I think that we're miscommunicating the importance of education. It doesn't have to be Harvard, Yale, Columbia, Stanford, but I think you know, we're not doing ourselves a service by downplaying education. Um, and you are extremely educated by the finest institutions in the, the world. And so I was hoping we'd start with your career trajectory, how important your education has been to your success today. Yeah, it's, it's, that just means I have a lot of debt that I haven't paid. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know if you were a scholarship kid or not. <laughs> I mean, look, I um, I really loved school. I mean, you know, I think, um, you know, it's it, like in, in my mind, it's an environment to explore different aspects of your interest and your personality. A lot of it was you know, about personal development. I study things that I don't use today, right, which is often, it's very common. Like I was a math major and Yes, I use calculator math today, but I do not use, you know, genetic algorithms to solve any problem today. Um, but, you know, I think it's uh, it's that sense of like personal discovery and then also accomplishment because it's you do all that is really ultimate, I think, mostly for you. Um, but, you know, those uh, the things I learned are from the people around me and obviously those networks, um, especially the ones from business school, have carried me throughout my career. And I really, really value them. I mean, I, I think careers are built not just by you but by the community of people that you surround yourself with um, because though that's where you get sage advice and get perspective and um, I think education is one of those you know institutions one of those sources of of get building that network and getting that sage advice and, and learning um, so you know I, the things I learned are just I think actually how to follow what I'm interested in um, how to, you know, structure my time, you know, to accomplish what, whatever it is that I wanted to do. Um, and that network, you know, that incredible people, the community of people around me. Yeah, it's a huge network. And we can see that in the variety of schools that you went to, but understanding being more interested, you mentioned, you know, and I'm a big branding effort of being more interested than interesting. In fact, I'm going to do a parody with the world's most interesting man with the world's most interested person. Uh, more importantly, though, we learn so many lessons. But one of the lessons that we learn by going to formalized education is how to learn lessons and to look for lessons and things. And I think it gives us a positive perspective throughout your career. It hasn't always been easy. Um, and yet you're at the top of the game now working as the COO of one of the most sought after companies to work with and biggest brands as far as companies goes in the world. Um, but through that process or perspective of learning lessons, what were some of the key lessons you've learned throughout your career, especially that are applicable today with the extraordinary changes we're going through? I mean, so many, so many. Um... You know, it's like earlier in my career, just like before you even enter a company, I think in my mind, maybe this, this is my math background, I thought, you know, it's really important to get the right answer. I mean, education kind of teaches you that. You should get the right answer. You got to get the, you know, the 20 multiple choices correct. And that's what you're asked to do. And in business, I think, you know, sometimes you're strategically searching for the right decision or the right answer, which, you know, involves data and all that thinking. But you can't ignore people. And I think, you know, I, I sometimes, I think when I started my career, I was um, sort of like an intellectual purist. Like we have to always get the right analytical answer. And logically that's the right thing to do. And in reality, if you don't balance that with like the, the practical realities of the people you're working with, like, can they get there? Do they want to do this? Um, you know, you're going to fail. And I had, I had that, 
roadblock multiple times early in my career where I had like, I think intellectual, I wanted like intellectual purity in terms of the answer. Um, and I think didn't spend enough time on the people part of the answer. And I, um, and that's obviously changed for me. My whole life is people. And you realize like companies are these amazing, amazing things where all you have for the most part are people. Sometimes it's people using machines, but it's, it's people. And, you know, thousands of people will produce a newspaper every day. Thousands of people will, will produce pixels on a website every day. Thousands of people will, you know, produce like 50,000 cars a year. Like it's, it's an astonishing thing that gives you like a very deep appreciation for humanity. And so um, for me, I've learned, like I start always with the people. I spend most of my time on people because if people are in a good place, if they know the strategy, if they know our values, if they feel good and they're in a good place, they will do amazing things and they will carry, you know, you, you and the company forward. So that, that's a big, big change in mindset for me. Yeah. People's over numbers. And I love yeah. to hear that. And obviously Reddit uh, being a brand that grows and the company that grows so quickly, uh, chief operating officer is always a ubiquitous role, meaning that in some companies, you can rename it in a variety of ways from your chief people officer to the chief heart officer to, you know, the task master, master determined upon what the culture is. And I was hoping you could share with us a little bit of Reddit's culture and your role as a chief operating officer as it pertains to Reddit. Yeah. Um, so for those of you who don't know, I mean, Reddit is, you know, part of the largest community platform in the world is a community of communities, it's like 100,000 communities where people, you know, they dive into the things that they love, you know, it's built around their interests, hobbies, passions. Um, and it's, it's often what we call like a very human place. It's, it, it's, it's, a, it's on the internet, but it is a very human place because every single thing that exists on the platform, every piece of content, every vote, everything was created by a person. It was moderated by a person. The community is founded by a person. And so that that gets to the heart, I think, of, of the values of Reddit. Um, Reddit is a very human company. We take everything we build, we look at real life, like real human behaviors, and we reflect, we think about how does that come to life on our platform? How do we make that better? How do we empower people to do that and more with the tools that we give them on our platform? That might be conversations they couldn't have in real life, exchanges they couldn't have in real life. My day-to-day -day is, I mean, a, a lot of it is around um, making sure that we as a company who have, you know, doubled in size and grown so rapidly, stay true to those values every day. I mean, day-to-day, -day, I, you know, I oversee revenue. I make sure that we have a sustainable growth model that supports our mission of bringing community and belonging and empowerment to everyone in the world. So you need a business to do that because that requires money and serving the communities. Um, I lead our uh, marketing area, which is just growing our brand. I lead finance and um, also our partnerships. So thinking you know, externally uh, about who we can partner with to grow the platform and international. So really evolving Reddit from what was, you know, started as a pretty American, you know, value-based company to a truly global platform inside as a company culturally and obviously in terms of the audience that we serve. Um, so, you know, most of my time day-to-day is is really thinking about how do we just make sure that everyone is marching to the same you know to this to the same beat in the, in the same direction and when you're dealing with online communities and you know from my own personal brand of you know i ran the most notable sports agency in the world always building traditional brands like the steve young and troy aikman's of the world and lennox lewis's and you know moving to you know, it was a lot of fun, but it was easy because we had a, a very controlled community. Um, and one of the things I learned is, you know, working with Gary Vaynerchuk for the last five years of building my personal brand is that your signal, you know, your brand goes everywhere and the spectrum varies in an online community and the impact of an online community, because everyone has a voice and people that may not have any courage to have a voice in a press conference certainly easily can have courage to have a voice online. And then you have the fact checking side and all the other variables that 
uh, can build or destroy a brand. You know, what impact has that power of the online community, the strength of your signal, the spectrum that Reddit reaches, but also the clarity of the message uh, that is so important, which so many people rely on from Reddit, especially uh, and their advertising and marketing business. You know, how have you been able to create that powerful online community, but yet keep it authentic? Yeah. You know, it's, um, we, we all, that quality of authenticity and trust um, is something that we certainly don't take for granted, but is incredibly important to us. And it's amazing, actually, if you look at the surveys, I mean, the trust level on Reddit just continues to grow. There's a huge chasm between Reddit actually Amazon reviews and Google reviews when it, in the world of product and, you know, service kind of search and social media, frankly. And that's because, you know, social media has a little bit of a performative nature to it. Um, and, you know, the, the myth of, Hey, if I, if I wear my name, I'll be on better behavior. Actually, I think from everything we see is clearly not played out. Um, you know, what, what matters for people's behavior is ultimately the context that they're in, right? You know, where am I? Who are the people around me? And are there values or mores or behaviors that are a norm that I hold myself to as a result of being this in this environment? And that's what happens on Reddit in our communities. That is ultimately how we maintain the trust and the authenticity in addition to the community being able to participate and vote, et cetera. Um, and you know that is um, that that is that is something that is at the core of the platform from a consumer perspective, but also as we build our business, at the core of that, right? So when we built our advertising business, privacy has always been a value for Reddit since day one. It's not something that you know has become important in the last three years. So we've always allowed users to have control over their data and their identity by having you know naming themselves on the platform, not having to give their PII, not being forced to log in to get answers to questions that are really important to them. Um, you know, we have not built our advertising business based on, you know, harvesting data across the internet. Like it's based on what people do on Reddit. So it's not, it's consistent with how we operate at Reddit. And I think our proposition is really rooted in, you know, we take our cues from the community. It's rooted in what they want, right? So we know that over time, what's happened is that um, people are coming naturally coming through online communities to get information when they're trying to buy products and services. Um, there's a moment where you're like, okay, do I want this vacuum or this? Vacuum? I kind of want to know if a real person who bought this, like what they think. And guess what? On Reddit, there are communities, of people who are completely altruistically will share with you their experience with a product. And that trust allows you to move through the path to purchase really confidently. And as a result, buy the right thing for you and become a higher quality customer. So our business is built around a behavior, which is very, uh, very natural. And so there's no tension in the platform. We go with what our naturally our users are doing. I love that because it is buying the right thing for you because you get that insight on similarities, synergistic and supplementary to your own values uh, instead of you know some overselling, backend selling, even lying, manipulating that goes on uh, in these online communities uh, outside of Reddit. Um, now, there's so many different projects going on at Reddit. W give me an example of one that you're a part of, a current project that you're working on. Yeah, I mean, international is really you know on my mind. Um, we have such an incredible opportunity to expand globally, and you know, Reddit traditionally has been it's grown. Um, it's grown in English uh, for the most part, and now is, you know, expanding into different languages that obviously requires product work and requires um, a different uh, sort of employee skill set, too, because uh, you want to change the demographics of our internal company to reflect what we uh, want to serve in terms of our audience. So that's on my mind a lot because I think it's a cultural shift. It's also um, a shift in the platform that, you know, will have a very even more diversity in our communities um, and scaling, right? And just thinking about raw global scale is a interesting business problem unto itself. So I spent a fair amount of my time in, in this area. One of the other things that I read about you that I love is, you know, a lot of people talk about, about doing what they love 
And, you know, I try to empower people with a different perspective. Uh, one that I read that you said was the key to you and your business, which is do it with love, which is completely different than doing what you love. Um, yeah. When you do it with love, what are some of the mindset tools that you're utilizing? Because business, especially at the C-level of a big company, is not easy. And sometimes yeah. I know from personal experience, yeah. it's not easy to do it with love. Uh, yeah. And so yeah. I was hoping you could share some of the tricks of the trade of mindset to do things with love. Yeah. Um, I mean, I when I say that, one of the things I think about is, um, is always, you know, coming to the table, believing that other people have good intention. Um, that can be hard because you may disagree with people. They may do things that, you know, you may not agree with. But coming to the table and thinking, okay, there, there must, people are rational and they're, they're doing something with a thoughtful purpose. It may not be what you like, but that it comes from a place of good intention and that it comes from a rational place. And that's, that's one. And I find that that really helps on a day-to-day -day basis, even if you have disagreement with, with, with other people. The second is, you know, I, um, I take a long view on all the talent that I work with. I mean, in fact, I keep in touch with the talent over multiple companies. And the reason why is because you support the person, not the person while they're at your company, right? It's, it's, and by the way, I've had people leave, work for me, leave and come back. And that idea of like followership and that community that you build hopefully tracks with you throughout your career. I mean, as you grow to be a leader, you need more and more people who are going to follow you and who are going to, you know, help and work with you on the things that you want to accomplish. And I think that, you know, showing those people love when they leave, when they decide to make a choice for themselves that might not be to work with you or, or showing them love when you know it's time for them to find something else. Those can be really, really hard moments. Um, but I always say like, if, you know, if you lead with love and compassion, then like, I think you'll have a great relationship that transcends whatever situation you're discussing right now. That reminds me of uh, the very first person I had to let go uh, who did not, who I was very close with, did not talk to me for an entire year, but eventually, uh, through the same perspective, uh, asked me to officiate her wedding. So uh, I think it's very important to build those relationships in the world, as you know, not just in the online community, but in real life is a very small place. And to be kind yeah. to your future self and doing good deeds and consistently helping people to elevate them, to elevate yourself is important. Last question real quick. Obviously, the future holds many opportunities and options for you and for Reddit. Um, what's next for you, Reddit, and the online communities? Well, you know, I think um, online communities, look, they're increasing, they're increasing in their influence. And they're, in fact, I mean, we see this, you know, over the last, you know, certainly over the last 12, 24 months, even more. I think what I'm excited about is that today our communities they really, um, they add value through being altruistic places of safe, trusted conversation. But I think they have even more potential to add real world value on a bigger and more global level. Uh, you know, things like, okay, a community moving beyond conversation to creating things for each other, value exchange, um, you know, maybe being able to take action in the real world against a cause or something that's important to that community. Um, so I think um, I'm really, really excited about that. I mean, I think e-commerce is an area where, you know, e-commerce essentially is an area of empowerment, right? The like communities are about individual empowerment. They, we empowered people to talk to each other and transcend e immediate geographic borders then e-commerce is basically a way of empowering people to create businesses and transact between each other. I mean, you see Wall Street Bets is a way of people to participate in a large and opaque financial market, but to help each other participate in a new institution. People taking action in other real world areas. That's, I think, where um, our online communities on Reddit are going. And I'm really excited about that. I equally excited. I think when I think of Reddit and I think of Jen Wong, the CEO of Reddit, I think of trust and vet. And uh, it's an important reconciliation between being able to trust uh, our own community, but also have the ability to vet uh, in a collective 
collective consciousness or group, which adds more credibility and more opportunity for everyone and more quantitative value, not to bring your math background back into it, but I had to somehow figure out how uh, that education was so important in the quantitative value side uh, to the subjective value of human beings and the ability to find you know, the right answers for us. And that's what you're doing for a huge community around the world and with the international things going on. And of course, the continual growth domestically, we only expect great things in the trust and vet realm from not only Reddit, but from Jen Wong, COO of Reddit. 